Now the main question of this video is, do the boats float? Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Light series. It's basically like the Adventure 3, but it comes without the camera and it comes without the filament detector. And it also means that this printer is a little bit cheaper and a lot more beginner friendly. So now we're going to get a beginner at 3D printing and let him tackle this 3D printer and see how easy or hard it is to use it and how good the prints are gonna come out. I will try to walk you through every step I make and try to make it as clear as possible. So first off, let's start with the unboxing and then we can continue from there. Now as I was doing the unboxing, there were two main things that I noticed. The first one is that it comes with filaments of PLA 1.75mm, which is red, which is cool. But the problem is that it doesn't come with a filament holder. As you will see now over here, the filament holder is important for this printer. But I think it should still be fine using this. I will just replace this and imagine that there is a holder and see what happens. I also know that next time when I want to get my next filament, I'm going to have to get one that comes with the holder, which is pretty natural anyways. The second thing I noticed is when you're unboxing the printer, you will notice that there's a carton that comes inside the 3D printer and it's going to be pretty hard to remove. Of course, Flashforge tell you how to remove it. Basically, you have to connect the printer to some electricity and then you have to increase the height of the bed level and you have to remove it slowly and smoothly. I did not do this, I just took it out because it was, it was too much of a hassle to connect it at that time and I had no problems with that either. Now, when you're doing the unboxing, you will notice that it comes with all of the tools that you will need so that you can make any adjustments on the 3D printer. Hopefully, you won't need to. You will also notice that it comes with two cables to connect your printer to the electricity. One of them is a UK cable and one of them is a US cable. And it also comes with a starter's guide and another notebook which comes with safety instructions and a warranty. The quick start guide was pretty impressive. It comes in English and it's pretty thorough and it's not so hard to understand. So I went through and read the whole quick start guide and basically it tells you how to connect your 3D printer. It tells you how to level your bed, how to connect to the cloud and how to connect it to the Wi-Fi. We will try to get through all of these steps in the video so no worries there. And if you still need even more help, you can always go to their website or to their YouTube channel. The YouTube channel you can find by scanning the QR code on their quick start guide. And for the website, you can go there by clicking on this link here. Inside the website, you will see that there's an in-depth manual that will help you understand even more steps for this 3D printer. And Flashforge also comes with its own 3D slicer. Now you can use this slicer which is called the flash print or you could even connect it to Cura slicer. So far for this video we're going to be using the built-in slicer which is the flash print. You can get to the flash print by going on the website and then clicking on download and now you have the software. The software is pretty easy to use and we will get back to it soon. Now that we know all of the basics about the 3D printer, the next thing we're going to do is try to plug in the 3D printer and insert the 3D filament and see how well it's going to fare. We're going to have to level the bed and then we can try one of its custom built shapes inside and try to print that. The only shape that they have inside the printer right now is a box. So we can try 3D printing that box. So now I have turned the 3D printer on 
and it has an interesting sound. First it takes time to load and then it's ready to start using. Next step is to insert the filament into the machine. You're going to have to click on filament and then click on load. The machine will heat up to the right degrees and then you will have to insert the filament into the machine. It will ask you to begin loading the filament. Insert the filament so that it is going in in a clockwise direction. You will see that once you start inserting the filament it will take it slowly. If you look over here you will see that it starts turning until the filament has gone in exactly to the right amount. It will then ask you to press OK when a new color appears. Then it will stop loading in the filament and the filament will be ready for use. The next step we will want to be performing is to make sure that we have leveled the bed correctly. To level the bed, click on Tools and then click on Settings and then click on Calibration. Once you click on Calibration, it will start pre-adjusting. You will see that the extruder as well as the bed are moving to the correct position. This will take a moment, but once it is ready, the extruder will go to the middle of the bed all the way down. You will notice that there is not much space between the extruder and the leveling bed. The goal here is to go back to your monitor. You can play with the Z-axis and you can go up or down in 10 mm increments. At the moment it is set at negative 40. To know the correct setting, what you're going to have to do is find a piece of paper, an A4 paper sheet. Slide your A4 paper sheet into the extruder slowly. If it cannot pass through, this means that the height of the extruder is too low. So you will have to go back to the settings and go up a little bit in 10 mm increments. Then test again. Now it's best that you don't go too tight at the beginning because it will scratch your bed. Once the paper is sliding between the extruder and the hotbed, this means that you have leveled the middle section correctly. Then you will go back and click on next. Once you click on next, it will ask you if you want to continue the auto calibration. Here, click on yes. You will now notice that the extruder is going to the far edge of the bed. Now you will have to complete the process once again. Get your paper and start squeezing it until it goes in perfectly. If it's too loose, then you will have to go down with the extruder until it touches the level bed. The extruder will start going around all of the main areas of the level bed. Once you have completed the adjustments for all of the levels, finally you will click OK and then it will be completed. Then the extruder will use its homing function, it will go back to its main position. Then your bed is perfect and it's ready to start printing. There's quite a lot of setting functions in the printer, however for now let's start building something. The printer already has some storage in it. Inside the storage you will find one print option. So I will click on the storage and you will see that there is a box. So let's try printing this box and see what happens, shall we? You can see that the estimated time is 13 minutes. It also estimates how much will be used from the filament. So let's test it out. And now, before the 3D printer can start doing its job, it has to make sure that the heat of both the bed as well as the extruder are in the right temperatures. On the right side you will find the heat of the leveling bed, and on the left is the heat of the extruder. Once it's ready, the print will start. I have my stopwatch ready and let's see the difference between the predicted time and the actual time. Thirteen minutes, thirty seconds. Not bad. Mm -hmm. 
The heating bed is also easy to slide out and put it back in as well. One thing to mention is about how you should remove your print from the level bed. Ideally, you would have some kind of spatula which you would be able to shove under the material and the prints and it will just come right off. Considering that I didn't have any specific tools designed to remove material from the bed, I still had no difficulties. Now if you don't play around in the slicer, you will notice that every print you have will have a base. The space is to make sure that it's easier for you to get your print off of it and off of the leveling bed without having too much damage. It also helps in how smooth the print is going to be. As for removing it, it's pretty easy. You're just going to have to press quite a little bit and it will come off. The second one, Shippy, was a little bit harder because I had to go into the software and try to extract a G-code out of it. And then I sent the G-code into my USB flash drive and put it into the printer. I'm going to quickly explain how to get the G-code sent to the printer. First of all, open up the flash print software. Basically, right when it opens up, they show you how to move around. And most important, they show you here what the main file types are that you are allowed to import. Here are examples of some supports and other functions available in the software. If you ever need to figure out how to do this again, you can always find it up here in help. To zoom in and out, use your mouse scroll. To move around, hold left click. To rotate the view, hold right click. Now, if you click on load here, you will be able to import your files into the software. I will import a shippy boat and it will look like this in flash print. Here are some more functions to control your object. If you go into move mode, you will be able to do this. Rotation does this. Size naturally changes the size. And the cut one can be useful as well. And then you are ready to press print. Here you will see all the main instructions. Resolution is the most important part here. The higher the resolution, the slower the print. For now, you don't want to mess around too much with more options. But here are the main categories. Once the software finishes the slicing, you will see how the estimated shape will be after printing. You can either send the G-code through Wi-Fi or Ethernet or you can export it using a USB stick. When exporting, make sure to save it as a GX file. The print came out pretty smooth and I was really happy and surprised by the results. Now the main question of this video is, do the boats float? It floats! They both float! And the second question, which boat is faster? Now things started to get a little bit more difficult when I tried to print a car. Not just any car, but back to the future car. It's a pretty complicated one and it failed pretty badly when I tried to print it the first time. I realized that the main mistake I made in this was with the supports. I had supports on to help the car not drool down, but these supports were not enough. And if you look at the settings here, there's an option that allows you to print roots and supports inside the actual object which will find the roots even for higher places, not just the base. That I had ticked. Therefore, I tried to do the same object one more time. This time, it was a little bit bigger and I improved the supports. Even then, I still had some issues. If you look at the front top of the part, the front glass and the back glass, you will notice that the quality is not so high. This is because the supports were not enough and not strong enough and therefore the prints just drooled down and didn't connect. However, I am pretty satisfied with the overall quality of the car, considering it is a very hard print to accomplish. So I've been testing the printer out for quite a while and I'm pretty happy with its results. There were some fails inside the prints, 
but I think the main problem is the prints were too hard and at the beginning I was not so good at using the supports. So over here we have all of the difficulty levels of the printing. The first one was the basic one, which was the box that came already with the printer. Now for the rest of the 3D prints, I went to different websites and I looked for 3D prints that were already ready. All I had to do was download them and then print them out. Here are some of the websites that I tried to use to get these 3D prints. And after that, all you have to do is insert this print into the slicer. The slicer will automatically create the G-code for you, and then you can just throw it into the printer. Overall, one filament pack which came already with the Flashforge was enough to get me about 5 to 6 objects. It's not bad, but it also means that you're going to have to get quite an amount of filament, depending on what you're going to make. I think this printer is great for any kids or any amateurs who have never used 3D printers before, like me. I had pretty much no difficulties using any of its softwares or programs, and I didn't even need to use the advanced manual. It's safe and looks really cool at the same time. Unlike most of the other 3D printers, this one is surrounded by a box in all of the directions. It really helps you keep everything safe and reduce any mistakes that could happen while you're printing or after it. The pros that I found in this printer were quite a lot. The first one is it's simple. The second one, it's cheap. The third one is of course that it comes with a slicer which is free and not so hard to use. And furthermore, they have a lot of instruction manuals which will help you every step of the way. The cons really, I didn't find many. Maybe one of the cons was that the filament didn't come inside a spool and that made it much harder for me to insert the filament into the 3D printer but I still managed to do so, so it was not that big of a deal. If you found this printer interesting, you can always go down into the links below and find the website as well as a link for the printer. I learned quite a few lessons using the Flashforge printer, and it has been a lot of fun. And here are some other objects that I attempted to print once this filament finished. Personally, if I went back in time, I would still buy this printer anyways. I think it was a good option for me. Well, that's it from my side, and have a nice day and enjoy your printing.